Alright y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So today's video, I'm actually going to be doing an overview of the M50 protective mask. So we'll sort of break this video down into three parts. Uh, I'm going to go over a few things, but we'll break it down just to make it a little bit easier. So I'll go over an introduction and uses for using the, uh, the Pro Mask. And then I'll go over my personal tips, stuff that has, has helped me when using this mask. And then I'll just give some additional information at the end. So kicking it right off, this is it right here. So this mask actually comes in two variants. So you have the M50, which is this. And this is more for ground and ship use. And then you also have the M51, which is very similar. Um, that's more directed towards ground vehicle usage. Now it does have a superior level of protection as well as uh, less breathing resistance when compared to the old M40 mask. Um, in the Marine Corps, when I got in in 2012, we already had these. Um, I know the Army was a little bit late. I think the Army got the, this M50 maybe about two or three years ago. But yeah, um, as, far as, as far as I've used it, um, I love this mask. I can't really complain. I don't really have anything to compare it to. But from what I hear, it's much easier to breathe in this compared to the old M40. Now it does offer a really good protection, um, so you'll get your chemical biological protection of course, and that'll get, that goes with certain agents, so you have your nerve agents, which is you know sarin gas, you have your blister agents, so that being like mustard gas and similar agents, you have your, your tear agents, so CS and, and OC, uh, as well as it does offer some protection against some toxic industrial chemicals, um, not too much for you know chlorine. If you're going to try and use this with chlorine, it's best not to try and keep this on for more than you know maybe 10 minutes max, because at that point it really starts to melt and burn through the filters, and then once that happens, you're you're kind of screwed. So if you do come into contact with chlorine and put this on, just try and get out of there within you know 10 minutes. In addition to that, it does offer uh, protection against radiological particulates. Now we're talking about worst case scenario with with these. So, you know, if it comes down to that, just put it on, use it, and then obviously get out of there as soon as possible. So I'll give you all a better close-up right now. Uh, it does come in three sizes, and of course it is fully adjustable, just to make sure you get that good seal. It has a protective lens on the front. Uh, however, I've noticed that it's pretty fragile, at least these clips are on the sides. I've noticed the years that I've used them, that's usually the thing that, that ends up breaking. And once it breaks, it's, it's pretty much no good. And getting a replacement uh, protective lens is kind of a, a pain in the butt. There is the option for the smoke lenses. However, I mean, you're pretty much never going to, to need that. So I would just recommend not trying to install those at all. Because, again, these, these clips are pretty fragile. And then that's just another le level of protection that you're getting rid of. Especially if, you know, shrapnel or fragment ends up hitting the inner lens. If you have a broken seal, then this is no good for you. So just something to keep in mind as well. Okay, so now I'll move on to my actual personal tips with this. So I've used this particular mask for seven, eight years now. And I would say Seaburn, or at least this Pro Mask, is sort of like my, my secret passion, mainly because I started off guarding nuclear weapons with this Pro Mask. And we took that very seriously just in case there was some contamination in one of the structures. This is, you know, something that's going to save our lives. So we took, you know, donning and clearing the mask and everything like that seriously. Now, moving on to donning and clearing, you do have nine seconds to get this on. And that's just the standard. It's not uh, definitive for any contamination. However, that's the standard that the, the infantry and the army, the military generally sets for being able to put it on and generally protect yourself from contaminations that might have uh, come up in the air or what have you. Now, nine seconds is a standard, but I know for a fact you can get that in a much shorter time uh, just to increase your chances of survive survivability and limit your contamination. So I've probably gotten to about four or five seconds with onion clearing. So it's pretty easy if you have enough practice, and there are some, some tips and tricks just to help you. Now, if you're storing your mask, you're never going to want to store it like this with the harness completely behind it. So this is pretty standard, and you'll see this pretty much everywhere. It's not necessarily a specialized thing to do it like this, but folding the harness in front makes it much easier to put on. So people, you'll see it, and it'll normally just be like, like that, kind of like lazy, but you definitely really want to make sure it's all the way in front because 
the lower you get it in the front, you'll notice that these straps tend to, to arch up. So if you just get a little bit lower, it keeps them towards the bottom of the filter and it just makes it way easier when you're putting it on because I've noticed when it's like this, these will start to start to curl in. So whenever you try and put it on, a strap will end up getting caught inside and it'll you know, obviously you're not gonna get a seal if you have a strap that's on the inside. So just try and get that, that harness in the front as low as possible. And you can probably see that I have electrical tape on the harness itself. So I have it on the pull tab. Normally it's just like a little, uh, like a nylon loop, but I've just taped it together just because when you're sweaty, when you're nervous, your motor skills and your, your sense of touch just tend to go out the window, especially for like survivability's sake. So you just want to make sure it's easy, it's something recognizable as opposed to the rest of the harness. If you feel that electrical tape or whatever you want to put on it, you'll definitely know that you're, you're grabbing the right thing. Same with these uh, straps on the side. So you can see I have electrical tape on both of these because when you put it on, that's, the, that's pretty much the next thing. Once the harness is over, then you're grabbing these two. So electrical tape here, you know you pull that down. Electrical tape here, you just pull those to the side. Now, when you're sizing it and you're actually, um, when you first get the mask, just make sure you put the entire thing on and just size it as best as possible. The only straps that you're going to loosen up after that are these bottom straps. So if you see these top straps, they have a, a clip and you can sort of just pop that up and then clip it back down. Now, when you first get it, you want to make sure that you adjust these, but after that, you're never gonna touch them again because you'll see people put the mask on and they'll, they'll pull this and the clip will end up coming up and their mask will just completely loosen. Because once you undo these clips, it's going, to, it's going to loosen. It's not going to tighten. So it takes way more you know, motor, motor skill to try and pull it and then clip that as well. So once you clip those, just leave it, okay? It's just, it's going to be a hassle if we try and do anything else. I'm telling you, you don't want to get in the habit of messing with those. So adjust those, adjust the ones on the bottom once you get it on. And then from there, it's just clearing the mask out itself. So when you take it out of the carrier, again, you can see there's nothing, there's nothing blocking, none of the straps are in the way. That's going to go directly on your face. Next step is pulling the harness down and then tightening the straps. So I'm going to do that and then I'll, I'll demonstrate what it means to, to actually clear the mask out and make sure you have a seal. So, So the reason why you put your hand over it and blow out, that's to push out any contaminants that might be sticking in your filters already. When you put your hands over the filters and breathe in, that's just verifying that you have a seal. Because if you don't verify you have a seal and you put it on and you, you hear something like this, When you suck in like that, you're literally just going to be sucking in contaminants. So you really want to make sure that you pull these nice and tight and check that seal. So you'll notice it'll suction to your face whenever you do that. So those, those are pretty much the steps. Again, you take it out, put it on your face, pull the harness down, tighten the straps, push out the contaminants, make sure you have a good seal. Okay, so this electrical tape is pretty much just used to help facilitate that as much as possible. Now, this is my carrier as well. You can see I have electrical tape here. So your hands pretty much get trained to wherever the electrical tape is, that's, that's where you want to grab, okay? Normally, again, this is like a flat nylon strap, and it takes a lot of, um, you know, tactile, tactile movements to grab that, that narrow strap and make sure you have a good, you know, grasp on it and pull it. When it's like this, I can just take my whole hand and grab around it to open my carrier. Otherwise, people tend to just use like their thumb and index finger to grab it and pull it like that. Again, if your hands are sweaty or what have you, it's just going to be much harder to get everything done as fast as possible. So those are the, the sort of tricks that I've uh, learned to make it a little bit quicker and just you know sort of trick my body into knowing what to do without me actually thinking about it too much. So again, you do have nine seconds. Uh, however, you want to get that as, as quick as possible. 
Another thing that I see people doing all the time is whenever they're practicing, they'll say gas, 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 which is the sign you give whenever there's a uh, contaminant in the air or what have you. So you'll do the, like the hand and arm signal and you'll say gas, gas, gas. But a lot of people tend to do it before they actually put their mask on. And that's just, it's not the right move because if you're doing that, you're just exposing yourself for a longer period of time, especially when you're breathing in air. Whenever there's a first sign that there's a contaminant in the air, you want to stop breathing, close your eyes, make sure there's, there's as little as possible uh, for that contaminant to actually get inside your body, especially if it's a nerve agent. It's going to be a bad time if you're screaming gas, 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 and moving around a lot, keeping your eyes open. Again, it just exposes you for a longer period of time. So you can do the whole gas, 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 hand and arm signal whenever you get your mask on. So mask on is a priority. Um, I mean, when you see other people throwing on their mask, it's probably a good sign that you need to throw on your mask too, okay? So I'll run through everything step by step so you can see it. Now it'll start for me, you know, being exposed to the contaminant, taking my mask out, putting it on, and then giving the hand and arm signal towards the end, okay? So I'll do it nice and slow. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything for speed right now. So just so you all can see the steps that are actually involved in putting the pro mask on. All right, carriers going around my waist. Make sure you adjust these. And I would, I would advise taping them down because these straps are not very good. The second you start moving around or running at all, they tend to loosen up. And especially the, uh, the bottom strap, which I'll show you in a bit, that tends to like to loosen up to the point where it goes below your knee. And then it happens where you sort of like just wrap yourself up and end up falling down because it slips under your knee and you can't extend your leg all the way. Now again, when actually putting your mask away, just make sure these straps are nice and low so they're not popping up and you know folding in and preventing you from getting the seal. So make sure it's nice and low. And when you're putting it in, it tends to, the carrier itself tends to push the straps away from preventing the seal, the seal. So that's good. Just make sure that the straps don't fold inside the mask when you're putting it in, okay? So everything's nice and set up. My straps are nice and tight. I'm not going to get tripped up by this one. My pull tab is sticking out, so I'm not digging for it whenever, the, whenever you get exposed. So then the exposure happens again from here. You stop breathing, close your eyes, make sure it's as, as hard as possible for that contaminant to enter your body. And you're going to pull from here. You're going to grab your pro mask. You can see there's nothing in the way. So you're going to put it on, clear your filters, and then make sure you have a seal. Just like that, pretty simple. Again, you can get this pretty quick. You can get it easily to four or five seconds if you really practice and set it up as I've done here. So again, every single time you get that carrier off, when you get the uh, all clear unmask call, just make sure it's set up exactly the same way so you're not fumbling with anything. Nothing's changed up next time you actually use it. All right, so now let's do everything real time. Um, I'm going to leave it as is, you know, if, if I get nine seconds, I get nine seconds. If I get five, I get five. If I get more, then, you know, I probably shouldn't be doing this video. But something else to consider, if you have a helmet, don't be gentle taking your helmet off to put your pro mask on. Just rip that helmet off. That's the least of your worries when there's contaminant in the air, okay? So we'll do it real time. Again, I'm going to close my mouth and everything, get that pro mask on. And, uh, yeah, let's see how I do. So let's do it. Alright, not bad. Not the quickest, but not bad. Again, you can see it's really easy to get it under that, that nine that nine second. So I'll do it nice and slow and we'll see if I can still get it under that nine seconds. So a lot of people, when they're moving really quick, they might fumble and mess something up. But I'll show you that even doing it slowly, you can get it under the, the nine seconds pretty easily. So.
Again, when you're checking your seal, uh, I didn't really go over this, you shouldn't hear anything. You should just feel the suction, okay? So if you hear a little bit of air, either you don't have a seal or you're just not covering the filters all the way. So you heard, you, you probably heard there's a little bit of air. It's just because you need to make sure you cover the filters completely to get that seal. Make sure that seal is nice and good. Then again, every single time, because you never know when you're going to use it, just make sure you put it away nice and neat. And again, once your mask is on, um, what you should be worried about after that is make sure you decon yourself and probably get into to full mop suit. So yeah, you just want to make sure you get into that mop suit as soon as possible just to make sure any skin contaminants can't get on you. And decon, you have your M295 decontamination, which is usually something that comes with a mask. So you can use that once you actually get your mask on. Make sure you decon yourself just to get all those particulates off of you. So I'll finish up this video with uh, some additional information that might just help you out. Um, so with these filters, they're nice because you can see there's a, a little white patch in there. Uh, if you see that that ever turns blue at any point, either you have too much moisture going in your filters or the filters are just old, they've reached their, their shelf life. So you just want to make sure you replace them. There's a lot of people that do, you know, they run in these and they won't check their filters and there, there gets a lot of, uh, you know, water vapor and moisture just trapped in these and they'll just go bad. So just make sure you're checking that, especially if your unit brings you on a lot of pro mask runs. Uh, something else that has helped you, uh, that has helped me, so when putting this on, you can see there's some markings on the mask right here. So the filter itself has a little tab right there. When you're putting it on, just make sure you line up that tab with the disconnected and then just rotate it to the, to the uh, connected symbol right there. So you can see, make sure you verify it and it's nice and tight. You'll see people foaming around all the time with putting their filters on. So it just, it's there. It's kind of like dummy proof or infantry proof if you're in the infantry. Now, in addition to that, these are self-sealing. So again, you can use this with, with one filter. But however, if you do need to change the filter out while you're in a sea burn environment or in a contaminated environment, you can take the filter off and it will it's got these seals here, so it will self-seal, make sure no decontamin or no contaminants get inside. So it just prevents you from getting contaminated while actually changing the filter out. So a very nice system there. And there are other accessories that you can get with this. Um, you can get uh, a chin strap adapter, because a lot of times when you put your helmet on, you end up just choking yourself, because it, it takes a lot more chin strap length when you actually put this on. Just something to consider. Your unit probably doesn't have chin strap extensions, unfortunately. Um, but if you're a civilian and you know you just you, you just want one of these just to have around, just consider that if you're going to be using a helmet with it as well. Now there is also a voice amplifier that you can get on these, and a uh, little additional information with that. They make you sound like a, a stormtrooper or like a really crappy stormtrooper. Get your fucking rifle! Get your rifle! That's nothing. Outcasting. Don't worry about it. So if you're not familiar with those, um, they're pretty funny to hear. Uh, it kind of makes you feel a little cool. Maybe a little bit like Darth Vader if you want to go with that. But if you don't have the voice amplifier, you're going to be either screaming a lot in this when you're trying to communicate with someone. Hey, let's go! Give me two more guys! Let's do it in! Hey, let's go! Pick up! Pick up! Two more guys! Let's go! Or you're just going to be saying, what? You're going to be saying what a lot because you're not going to be able to hear anything. And people people are soft-spoken already. So if they put on a pro mask, it's going to be a, a hard time trying to understand them. Now, the voice amps aren't too good, but they do help. So just things to consider. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's any other tips and tricks you'd like to see with any other you know, U.S. military kit, then feel free to let me know and I'll see what I can I can do, see what I can pull out of my toolbox to help you all. But uh, again, I'm pretty passionate about the Pro Mask. Um, it's a good piece of equipment. It's one of the few pieces of equipment that I would say I would actually get, you know, outside of the military. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any, any other recommendations in general that you'd like to see on this channel, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm always up for everything. So thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We're we're getting the subscribers up there. I feel like we can get a uh, hundred thousand here by the end of the year so uh, that's kind of my goal right now 
Uh, again, if there's something you'd like to see for production quality, um, feel free to let me know. You know, I'm, I think I'm a pretty humble guy, so I'll try to do my best to facilitate. So that's it for this video, guys. So I'll see you all in the next one.